In the previous video, we started off building our power supply by designing and 3D printing a bracket for the transformer, a front and a back panel and mocking everything up. This week we'll wrap up the build and take the little power supply for a spin. We start off with the smoothing capacitor, which is the 3500 microfarad Nichicon brand that I attach to a separate board along with two screw terminals for ease of disassembly later on. To mount it to the custom 3D printed mounting bracket, I drilled some holes on opposing sides of the PCB that I also used as guiding templates for the bracket itself. I used hot glue to attach the bracket to the case of the power supply. To connect the smoothing capacitor to the input of the DPS5015, I stripped some wires and added some crimp terminals to both ends to facilitate the mounting and dismounting later on. For mounting the main PCB of the power supply, I designed a custom bracket in Fusion 360 using the AutoCAD file from the case manufacturer as a reference for spacing out the holes. The PCB itself already comes with standoffs that have M3 sized threads in them, so I used those along with some hex screws to mount it to the holding bracket. After adding the ribbon cables that connect the main PCB to the front panel module, I attached the bracket to the case using some self-tapping screws salvaged from somewhere. Always useful to keep them around. Next up, I connected the output of the smoothing capacitor to the input terminals of the power supply PCB. The back panel featuring the power connector, fuse holder and full bridge rectifier went on next. The connections from the transformer and towards the power switch were made using crimped spade connectors. Very convenient for ease of disassembly. To improve the rigidity of the front panel once again, I glued on some M3 threaded rod that I had lying around using a bit of epoxy. This helps when plugging in more stubborn banana plugs. Connecting the front panel spade connectors and guiding the output wires through the openings of the mounting bracket as well as connecting the flat cables for the display and buttons was a bit fiddly, but it worked out quite alright in the end. All that was left to do before closing it all up was connecting the output terminals of the power supply and doing a quick check on the output of the full bridge rectifier to see if we have the desired voltage. With that said, let's take a quick tour around the power supply. In the front, we can see the control module in the center and the power switch on the left, followed by the insulated banana plugs the earth terminal and the power supply binding posts that of course have the standard spacing for any adapter that we might want to use in the future. Right behind the front panel is the custom 3D printed bracket to which the PCB attaches, the input terminals, the smoothing capacitor that is connected to the full bridge rectifier and the linear transformer. In the back we find the mains voltage input connector and the fuse holder. The first thing I powered up from the power supply after a successful smoke test was a step-up conversion circuit for driving Nixie tubes. The ability to set the desired voltage and current limit before activating the actual output is really useful. As you can see on the brightness of the tube, we can also set the current limit during operation of the power supply with the output enabled. So far I noticed that the indication that the output is enabled could use some improvement and that there is a 40 mA offset with the current limit. Other than that I can say that it is a very useful tool for powering circuits on a breadboard and limiting output current so the magic smoke doesn't accidentally escape. But what about powering more demanding loads? In this instance the power supply provides around 60 watts to a LiPo charger without breaking a sweat. I did notice however that the rectifier in the back got a little toasty with a max temperature of around 60 degrees C, so I will probably add some feed and a heatsink to mitigate the problem. I recently found out about OpenDPS, an alternative firmware for the DPS module family that I want to try out in the future. 
Of course with the addition of Wi-Fi connectivity, because uh, why not? And that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching, see you next time.